The other most commonly used encoding for Unicode is called UTF-8, which encodes characters using either 1, 2, 3, or 4 bytes. It works out that the first 128 code points, the code points that correspond to the ASCII characters, those are always encoded just using one byte. Then the range of code points from 0080 to 07FF, they are encoded in two bytes per character. And then the code points 0800 to FFFF are encoded using three bytes per character. And then finally, all the remaining code points are encoded using four bytes per character. Notice that it's all the code points in the BMP that are encoded using 1 to 3 bytes, and it's all the code points outside the BMP that take 4 bytes. Once again, in this diagram, the bits in red are the fixed bits, and the bits in orange are the bits that actually represent the code point. So you can see here, for a code point encoded in 1 byte, that byte always begins with 0, and the remaining 7 bits are used to represent the code point. There are a few interesting things to note here about these fixed bits. First off, in UTF-8 text, the only bytes that are ever going to start with a zero bit are the bytes of single byte characters. Second of all, if a byte starts with one zero, it must be a byte of a multi-byte character, but it's never the first byte of that character. The first byte of a two-byte character always begins 110, the first byte of a three-byte character always begins 1110, and the first byte of a 4-byte character always begins 11110. Because of these properties, a program that scans UTF-8 code can always look at an individual byte. It can tell if that byte is the first byte in a character, and if so, it can tell how many bytes are in that character. This can make it a bit more convenient and more efficient for programs to scan through UTF-8 text. Now let's look at some examples. So say you have the code point 0031 and you want to encode it in UTF-8. Well, 31 is in the range of code points that use one byte, and so the first bit is always going to be 0. 31 in hex translates to the bits 110001. We add a leading 0, and so we get 0110001. Now for code point 0700, that's in the range of code points that's supposed to use two bytes. So the first byte begins with the fixed bits 110, the second byte begins with 10, and then the value hex 700 translates into binary as 11100000000. And so that's what goes in the orange bits. Code point 86FF is in the range that uses three bytes per character, and so we have our first byte beginning 1110, the second beginning 10, and the third beginning 10 and then the value 86FF in hex translates to 1000001101111111. Finally, code point 50000 is outside the BMP, so it's in the range that takes 4 bytes per character. So the first byte begins 11110, the second begins 10, the third begins 10, and the fourth begins 10. And hex 50000 translates as uh, 101 Zero 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 zero. That leaves us short two bits, so we add two leading zeros. Finally, be clear in UTF-8 that you have to use the designated number of bytes for that code point. So, for instance, the code point zero zero three one is in the range that is meant to use one byte per character. So it is then improper to use four bytes instead, even though it would be perfectly workable if you did that. So according to the spec here, these four bytes are in valid UTF-8. The last thing to say about text at this point is you should understand the difference between a text editor and a word processor. A word processor document contains not just text, it contains all sorts of formatting information. A text file, in contrast, is just a sequence of characters without any formatting. While word processors like Microsoft Word are perfectly capable of dealing with text files, opening them, and editing them. It's just not what they're geared for, and they're otherwise much more complicated programs than what is simply called a text editor. A text editor is a program like Windows Notepad, which only edits plain text files. And it's a text editor which is a programmer's main tool, because virtually all code is written just in plain text. Notepad is a particularly bare-bones text editor, but there are other, much more sophisticated text editors that are geared for programmers. The most notable of these are two that originate in the Unix days. 
one called VI, or also Vim, and another called Emacs. Both of these editors are extremely powerful and contain all sorts of conveniences, but they're also extremely complex and they have very steep learning curves. So you may want to learn them at some point. Many programmers swear by them, but others just never bothered to learn them, and others do, but don't even really like them. So uh, it's really a matter of personal preference. Most programmers tend to settle with something in between these two extremes, something less bare bones than Notepad, but not as extremely complex as, say, Emacs. Most programming today is probably in text editors that are included in uh, integrated developer environment programs like uh, Microsoft Visual Studio and other such programs.